Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, we all know how great off-grid systems look in full sunshine. Panels pumping away, batteries full. Today is not one of those days, however. Dark, a little rainy, and after living off-grid for 30 years, I build all of my systems for days like this. Yeah, so you see the difference, right? I mean, <laughs> love to be able to cast a shadow when that sun's out bright and full. Wow, so just a few minutes later and look at this, right? <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. And it's supposed to get darker and rainier again here later in the day, but fast moving conditions. But I have built for dark days. And just to give you guys a little context, when I first moved off grid high up into the Rocky Mountains 30 years ago, um, solar was extremely expensive. And those of you that have been on it as long as I have know what I'm talking about. Um, used propane for refrigeration, hot water heat, cooking. Uh, and when I first hooked up my first solar system up in the Rockies, I have to say it was almost mostly for entertainment purposes, running a TV, satellite, uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, so then when I came out here, uh, and of course, lead acid batteries were the thing back then. And when I first moved out here, that was still the case. Lithium wasn't on the market yet. And the first system I put in out here was uh, a half dozen uh, golf cart lead acid batteries. You know, the old Trojan golf cart batteries uh, worked very, very well. And just a few hundred watts of solar. And for some of you guys that are new to the channel that might not know, uh, when that lead acid bank that I originally bought out here started petering out, lithium was on the market. And I really wanted to try a lithium iron phosphate battery. And they were way more expensive uh, then than they are now, considerably. But I wanted one and I wanted to try it. So I bought my first 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Got it hooked up, and one of the first things I did was go out and buy an electric refrigerator, which I had never even considered in all of my previous years living off-grid, because it would just have taken so much equipment and been so expensive to do. So yeah, that was the game changer. And there it is, that's the very first lithium iron phosphate battery I bought. It's in production still and working great. And as many of you guys know, I was so impressed uh, that I added a second one <laughs> tied in parallel there. And then of course, I just started with a, a few hundred watts of solar panels on that initial battery. And then like it is here, the sun has disappeared once again. It's not extremely dark, but you know, it's considerably less than when it was in full sun. And then I got up to where I eventually had a thousand watts of uh, solar tied into that particular system, just to keep that refrigerator freezer that I'd purchased up and running. So, and then this has just continued, right? Uh, I keep adding different things and then building the system up for days like this and worse. Take yesterday, just for example. It was nothing but full sunshine. Most of my systems were 100% full by noon. And so now, besides running a full 20, 21 cubic foot refrigerator freezer 24-7, I've added a 48 volt system. I'm running high voltage appliances in the kitchen. And back here on this system, I've got 700 watts going into one battery, 
for the kitchen to run high voltage appliances. And then I've got another uh, 400 watts up here running in the freezer, a separate five cubic foot freezer. So life has changed dramatically. So I know you guys understand what I'm saying. It's, I'm not, I don't build for those sunny days. I build for the dark days. Because even on a day like today, where it's getting darker and darker as I speak, and it's going to stay that way, I am still catching pretty good sun off of here. Not like full sun, of course, but enough to keep all of my systems up and running. Yesterday, everything was full by noon. Today, maybe nothing gets full, but I have plenty of storage. And will, will these uh, darker conditions persist? I don't know. And the other thing I'll say is it took years to get to this point. I, I only built up as I could afford. And for those of you that have been watching the channel for a long time, you realize that, you know, I kept going out and buying $100 or less 100 watt solar panels and, and just adding on and stacking on as I could afford. I couldn't do it all in one fell swoop. And that gave me the time to figure out exactly all of the needs with adding new equipment, you know, how it was working. Add another 100 watts, still not quite there. Add another 100 watts when I could afford it. So the affordability was an issue that I had to consider. And now, all these years later, I would say I am pretty much, for my conditions here in the subtropics, I'm at about 1,200 and 70 feet above sea level and dark rainy conditions are considered normal up here and that's why I am over paneled for these days but it did take years and again just to compare 30 years those panels right back there at my fingertip are those uh, bifacials that I'm Got running a 48 volt system now, uh, actually running the refrigerator now. And those were $190 a piece, and they're 430 watts a piece. The first solar panel I bought 30 years ago I, was over $200 for 50 watts. <laughs> so whether it was in the Rockies, or here in the subtropics, uh, you know, once you started using solar or once I started using solar, you know, it gets the brain going. You start thinking of, oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> I can run other stuff. And now I have it where, you know, just a kind of a regular, simple home. Uh, I can run everything, everything. The highest wattage stuff that I run is in the kitchen now. An air fryer, 1,800 watts. Uh, the 48-volt battery pulls that, no problem. Uh, a grill, a Cuisinart grill, 1,900 watts. You know, I was grilling up some chicken last night. Uh, it only takes a few minutes. Everything was full. By the time all the cooking and everything was done in the kitchen, uh, I was still in the high 80th percentile of state of charge. Now I expect to be losing a little bit of ground over the next few days. Everything, like I said, got up to 100% full yesterday. I'll probably slowly go down on most of my systems over the next few days, but because I'm over paneled for dark days. The minute the sun comes back out in full, boom, I'm going to get right back up to, you know, near full on most of my systems. So, yeah, build for the darkest days. That's, that's some of my advice for the years that I've been living off grid. And do what you can afford. Don't, don't be in any mad rush about anything. You've got time. And for those of you especially that are new to going into solar, 
you don't have to be in any rush. You don't have to go out and spend, you know, more than you can afford. And the benefit of that is you learn a lot more about what you're using. So maybe your favorite device or something you're not quite keeping up and you think, well, one more panel or you're running out too fast and you think maybe one more battery, you'll figure it out. You will. All right, my friends. Thanks for tuning in as always. I hope you found this video interesting. And I can tell you right there that some rain coming and I'm so used to looking at the weather coming from the ocean towards me. Uh, that's rain that will be here in about five minutes. And I'm making a beeline towards indoors because I forgot my umbrella. Aloha, everybody. Hope you're all well. I'll catch you on the next one. Yep, I got about a minute to get in. <laughs> all right. And here's a little context of what I'm talking about. Yesterday I saw briefly periods over 900 watts coming in off of those two bifacials. And right here at peak sunshine during the day, 127 watts. And here, 400 watts available on that freezer system. 400 watts available and 70 watts. Still not the darkest of dark days, but you guys see what I'm talking about. And looking at the bedroom system, uh, 400 watts available there as well. 62 watts coming in. So it can get worse than this, but even on days like this where it's going to be fairly dark, um, I'm getting enough charge to keep everything up enough to be using all of my systems throughout the house, regardless of whether that sun comes out in full. And here's my backup system, which I showed you guys the other day. It's in float completely full so if these darker days persist that baby's ready to go and will be deployed yeah